Top 12 Meat Rabbit Breeds Number 1. Californian Rabbits These meat rabbits are stocky and often grow to weigh about 8 to 12 pounds. They are a cross-breed between Chinchilla Rabbits New Zealand Whites. Number 2. New Zealand Whites This breed of meat rabbits is perhaps both the most common and the most popular. They routinely weigh between 9 to 12 pounds. It is not uncommon for kits to reach 8 pounds when they are only about 8 weeks old. Number 3. American Chinchilla. Chefs around the globe tend to favor cooking and smoking this meat rabbit breed. Mature Chinchilla meat rabbits weigh about 9 pounds. Number 4. Satin Rabbits. It would be difficult to find a more cold hardy meat rabbit than the Satins. They boast a thick fur that is also heralded for its beauty. These meat rabbits commonly weigh about 12 pounds when fully mature. Number 5. Flemish Giants. It may cost a little bit more to keep this meat rabbit breed due to the voracious appetite of the animals. But they do regularly weigh up to 20 pounds when butchered. Number 6. Blanc de Hotot. These are among the largest breeds of rabbits and are also a heritage breed. They were created in France during the 1900s and were only the second rabbit breed to ever stem from breeding cultivated by a woman. Typically, Blanc de Hotot meat rabbits weigh about 11 pounds. The are highly regarded for their robust litters and maternal instincts. Number 7. Drecks rabbits. Mature meat rabbits of this breed generally weigh around 10 pounds. Drecks rabbits also boast a beautiful and thick fur that has long been used in making outerwear and linings. Number 8. Palomino rabbits. This meat rabbit breed has been popular in the marketplace for decades. They commonly grow to weigh between 8 and 11 pounds. Number 9. Silver foxes. These rabbits have long been a favorite among homesteaders. They are not always easy to find which means selling some of the offspring could help fund the feeding and caring of a rabbit colony or be used to purchase other needed preps. They commonly grow to weigh between 10 and 12 pounds. Number 10. Champagne Darjon. This moderately stout rabbit breed has been raised for meat production since the early 1600s. They typically weigh about 9 pounds when mature enough for butchering. Number 11. Belgian Hare. This heritage breed of meat rabbit is also a threatened breed due to the declining numbers currently being raised around the world. The Belgian hare was instantly popular on the meat market when it was first introduced in America during the early 1900s. A single rabbit of this breed could sell for up to $5,000 each during their heyday. In fact, millionaires like J.P. Morgan even invested heavily in the breeding of Belgian hares to increase the private fortunes. Unfortunately for the folks hoping to get rich on the backs of rabbits, they found themselves with filled hutches in an oversaturated market after prices dropped dramatically. The rabbits have fine bones and produce a lean meat. These rabbits have been known to be fairly difficult to breed. The breed is extremely active and needs plenty of room to deter poor behavior. Mature Belgian hares tend to weigh between 6 and 9 pounds. Number 12. Cinnamon rabbits. Rabbits of this meat breed typically weigh about 10 pounds. The breed was created accidentally during the early 1970s after a little girl in Montana received a chinchilla rabbit for Easter. It bred with New Zealand whites she and her brother later acquired. And eventually, the kits were also bred with their father's checkered giant and Californian rabbits. The breed is named after the beautiful color of the coats. Meat rabbit husbandry tips. The key to raising quality meat rabbits, especially for novices, is starting small. Invest in proven breeding stock and buy just one buck and one doe. Rabbits, as we all know, reproduce rapidly. A beginning keeper simply won't be able to adequately keep up with the daily health checks, feeding, and hutch cleaning necessary for multiple breeding pairs or groups from day one, at least not while producing illness-free animals that churn out satisfactory meat. Once you truly learn the cornerstones of meat rabbit husbandry, then it is time to expand your colony and start butchering and preserving the meat for an SHTF event. The perfect meat rabbit colony ratio is one buck to two females. Such a setup should most likely produce up to 50 kits baby rabbits on an annual basis.
a small colony of rabbits, regardless of the meat breed, can produce more than 300 pounds of just female kits per year. Creating a steady supply of future breeding does. A small rabbit colony, one that lives in only a humane three foot by two foot hutch, could ultimately produce around 960 pounds worth of kits each year. It might sound shocking, but it does not take long to wind up with a rabbit colony with 100 members if you purchase multiple dozen a buck or two. Here is a brief breakdown of the amount of work per week that is required to care for such a large colony while waiting for them to reach butcher weight. Feeding two and a half hours. Hutch cleaning five and a half hours. Mating two and a half hours. Weaning kits and care of doe nests three hours. Feeder and water container cleanings four and a half hours. Health checks two hours. As you can see, whether you are a smart prepper or a poor prepper, or both, you will be putting in a whole lot of time inside the rabbit pen if you attempt to keep a large colony. There is a lot of benefit to keeping a large rabbit colony but doing so while still learning husbandry techniques, including butchering and preserving, which was not factored into the above list, requires a substantial time commitment and can become very overwhelming. In spite of the time commitment, raising rabbits for meat is worth the effort. Here's why. Meat rabbit buying tips. Review the rabbit's physical attributes and look the animal over thoroughly for signs of both ill health and underdevelopment. Look to make sure both of the animal's eyes are bright and appear clear. A typical sign of good health. The coat of the rabbit should not show any signs of molting fur. If fur molting is present, the coat will neither feel soft or cling to the touch due to unsanitary living conditions or illness. The rabbit's teeth should show no signs of overgrowth and be aligned properly. A rabbit with signs of an overgrowth likely has either a jaw alignment issue which prevents it from grinding down its teeth in a natural manner or has an internal medical condition. No discharge should be visible on the nose of the rabbit. A rabbit with consistent sniffles could have pasturella, which is an oftentimes terminal and contagious disease. Ask to view the breeding pair that produced the rabbits if at all possible. A healthy rabbit should be expected to sniffle or even sneeze on occasion but not have snot bubbles coming out of the nose fairly consistently. If you handle a rabbit with these apparent issues, make sure to disinfect your hands completely before handling another one. Never buy from an auction. Although these rabbits might be healthy, you will not have the time necessary to inspect the animals or even talk to their keeper. The Guide to Raising and Breeding Rabbits for Meat Raising rabbits is one of the simplest things you can do on your homestead. Not only do they require little attention, but they also provide a great amount of meat. One of the first projects I wanted when we moved to our place in the country was rabbits. I had read many times that they produced excellent tasting meat at little cost. My wife, Carolyn, however, was sort of skeptical of the project because she thought that she, she might not be able to eat the rabbits, they look so cute. One payday when I happened to read an advertisement offering a six compartment. All metal wire hutch for sale for less than $20 I couldn't resist this goodbye. The hutch eventually came. But Carolyn was still skeptical and. Anyway. We were up to our next getting our barn finished up. Learning to milk. Running our broiler battery. Tending to our bees and goats and setting the geese. It wasn't hard to put off getting the rabbits for a while. Then. A friend of mine. Wally Boren noticed I hadn't done anything with my rabbit hutch and he asked if he could use it until I got ready. That was all right with me. He borrowed the hutch, set it up in his garage and began reading up on the subject of rabbits. Choosing a rabbit breed, Wally picked a variety called the chinchilla. You can take your pick of several good meat breeds. Wally favored the medium-sized breeds, which weigh around 8 to 10 pounds grown. You could go in for the Flemish giants. For instance, that sometimes weigh 20 pounds. They eat a lot more. Of course. And their fries, at 7 to 9 weeks, weigh not too much more than do those of the medium breeds at the same age. The New Zealand whites are another popular medium weight breed, their white fur is worth more than the chinchilla. There are a number of other good medium weight breeds. Of course, there are angoras with their beautiful, white, long fur, and other, fancy, breeds. 
But these are not meat rabbits. In ordinary times many of the small rabbit raisers don't bother to save the skins. But they do have some value. Right now. For example, buyers are offering from 30 cents to $1.50 a piece per pound. You can obtain names of buyers from a rabbit magazine. Wally started with a trio, a young buck nine months old and tutors of the same age. He bred the dis shortly after he got them. The following month he had 17 bunnies. Seven is a big enough litter, according to the experts, for one doe to raise. So Wally destroyed four from one litter of 12 and gave the other doe an extra to bring her litter of six up to seven. Wally rubbed a little menthol atom on her nose so she couldn't smell the difference between her own and the young one from the other litter. At seven weeks all 14 of the young rabbits were alive and frisky. At this age they weighed 44 pounds. The Tudors were bred again. Profiting from raising rabbits, Wally kept some careful records. Here's what he learned from them. A chinchilla weighing 3 pounds. Live weight will cost you from 25 to 35 cents or a little more to raise. You'd pay a dollar. At least. In the market for him. Wally figured out how much time it took him to raise a 3 pound fryer. It took 1 hour flat. That is. He explained. I spent 14 hours actual chore time, as a dub beginner, raising 14 meat meals for the family. I could cut that in half. But I like puttering around them. Wally had such good luck with the rabbits that, of course, I wanted to see what I could do. Wally, who is a most generous-minded fellow, kept us supplied with rabbit, he kept saying that after all he had to pay rent in some form or other for the hutch. Carolyn and I both liked rabbit very much, it tastes something like chicken but has a firmness that chicken doesn't have. I guess it was a year before I got my hutch back and got to keeping rabbits myself. Incidentally, after we did get the rabbits we didn't mind the idea of raising them to eat, I guess after eating some rabbits raised by somebody else it's easier to go into rabbit raising strictly from the standpoint of raising them for meat and not let yourself make pets of them. Of course, when you can put rabbits or chicken or anything else in a freezer and leave them there for a few weeks or months you'll find that you think of them as meat, not cute animals. What to feed rabbits? Each rabbit hutch should have a hay rack. This you keep full of hay, the rabbit experts recommend alfalfa. But a good, leafy clover hay is alright. Timothy isn't as high in protein as clover. But if it's properly cured it's better than a poorly cured clover or alfalfa. The rabbits can manage the hay better if it is cut up in 3 or 4 inch lengths. Take a handful, squeeze it into a bundle and saw it off into a box with an ordinary hand saw. You can also feed vetch, cow peas, and other rich hays. You can give your rabbits dried scraps of bread and crusts, also any kind of vegetable pairings and tops they'll eat. You can feed them lawn trimmings and weeds. But don't leave what they failed to eat in the pen. Take it out next day and pretty soon you'll find what they like best and how much to feed. Rabbits relish carrots and other root vegetables. Feed green food sparingly at first if your rabbits aren't used to them. Sometimes they eat too much and bloat or get diarrhea. You also feed them one of the prepared rabbit pellet foods or whole grain. They don't seem to like any grain that's ground up too fine. You can ask the man you buy your rabbits from for directions as to what he's found the best methods of feeding. How fast do rabbits multiply? Everybody has a story about how fast rabbits multiply. I remember a friend of mine who had a small family and worried about this when getting his rabbits. In fact, he decided that he'd start with the minimum a single doe and a single buck. He was a salesman and every time I'd see him I'd ask. Well, how many rabbits have you now? The first month it was just two. The second month it was two. The third month it was still two. About this time my friend began to worry about his rabbits not multiplying. And when, at the end of the fourth month, he still had only two. I began to get a little suspicious. Sure enough, he didn't have a doe and a buck, he had two bucks. Determining the sex of a rabbit is easy. Get the man you buy your rabbits from to show you. I find that two dozen a buck produce 40 or 50 rabbits a year to eat. At three pounds or more that is all our family needs. You breed about every 90 days. 
Gestation only takes 30 to 32 days. The young nurse for five or six weeks. Learning to eat as they go along. At six or seven weeks you put the young fries in another hutch or two and eat them between then and ten or twelve weeks. Or you process the whole tender crop at eight or nine weeks and quick freeze all except the one you want for dinner then. You can eat them as fries until they're seven or eight months old full grown. But by that time they've eaten a great deal of fairly high priced food and therefore aren't so much of a bargain. Cost wise. Better separate the young bucks from the desert three months. You can kill off old rabbits at the end of a couple or even three years and make a stew out of them. The skin from a mature rabbit is worth considerably more than from fryers. You can inbreed with no harm. Just keep a young doe or two out of a litter and breed her to your same buck when she's about seven to nine months old. You can stagger your breeding times. Having one fresh litter coming in every six weeks from one doe or the other. But if you adopt this system, you can't exchange the young between the does. Every three or four years buy or trade for a new buck. And while we're on the subject of buying, try to get good, healthy and strong animals. You don't care about a show rabbit, but do get good blood. They may even cost you from $10 to $25 a trio. You aren't likely to save money by starting out with $3 worth of scrubs. However, don't worry about pedigree or perfect markings or blue ribbon winners. Building a rabbit hutch. Rabbits are very hardy animals. Easy to raise and extremely clean. They can stand a lot of cold weather. But they can't stand very much of a wetting and hot weather gets them down. They wear fur coats in summer remember. They have to have clean feed trays and clean water. They need a cool, shady summer place with lots of ventilation. Some sunshine occasionally and a good roof. We keep our metal hutch in the barn. We clean it out once a week and keep plenty of straw on the floor and in the nest box, a nail keg with a strip across it. In winter, we water the rabbits night and morning, taking the water out before it freezes. In summer we keep the water trays always full. They drink a lot. Traditional German Hazenpfeffer recipe. Here is a recipe for the famous German way of preparing rabbit. Cut up your rabbit meat and put it into a jar. Cover with vinegar or wine and water. Equal parts. Add one sliced onion, salt, peppers, few cloves, bay leaves. Let this soak in a cool place for two days. Then remove and wipe the meat dry and brown it thoroughly in a frying pan. In hot butter. Turning it often. Gradually add the sauce or juice you pickled it in. And let simmer about half an hour. Until tender. Before serving. Stir in one cupful of thick sour cream. Rabbit raising basics. There's a lot more you ought to know about raising rabbits before you go ahead. But I've tried to give you an idea of what's involved. There are one or two good books on rabbits that you'll find worthwhile reading. You ought to have more detailed information about hut building, about dressing a rabbit, about keeping records, etc. All in all, the impression I'd like to leave is that rabbits are one of the first projects anyone interested in home food production should investigate. The space required by my rabbits is only 3 by 10 feet, and rabbits can be started any time of year. Easterners are behind the times in discovering how delicious rabbit tastes. In California, where rabbit is king, many prefer it to chicken, which it resembles. No other meat is easier, quicker, or as inexpensive for the homesteader to produce as rabbit, and it's easier to dress than chicken. Two good dozen a buck will give a family easily 180 pounds of good tasting meat per year. A modern, self-cleaning hutch fitted with the new automatic watering requires less than five minutes of attention a day.